Hey guys, in this video, I wanna give you three simple tips for correcting digestive bloat. Chronic and even acute digestive bloat is one of the most common symptoms of digestive dysfunction. And it's also one of the most undesirable, not just because of the fact that it is very uncomfortable and indicative of underlying digestive dysfunction, but aesthetically speaking, being bloated can be unsightly. And for these reasons, nobody really wants to walk around feeling and looking bloated. And fortunately, there are some very simple things that you can implement right now, a few dietary and lifestyle changes that can help to correct the bloat once and for all. Now, really quick before we get into these tips, I just wanna quickly review what is really causing digestive bloat. For those of you that are new to our YouTube channel, haven't watched our videos, or if you're not taking our Perfect Digestion course and you're unaware of the underlying causes for bloat, this is gonna be really helpful for understanding how to correct it, and it will help you make sense of the tips we're about to give in a moment. So really quick, let's reference this study here again, which talks about the correlation between hypothyroidism and SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. The study talks about how intestinal dysmotility is at the root of most digestive disorders. And intestinal dysmotility is referring to impaired intestinal movement. So basically the, the contraction and secretion of waste throughout the colon. And this is really just another way of saying that in most digestive issues, your intestines are not functioning properly, which is usually leading to some form of constipation. So the waste or the waste product of the food that you eat is not being properly eliminated through the body, which is causing it to build up in your intestines. And this in of itself could lead to feeling bloated or feeling sort of full and heavy in your intestines. However, in addition to this, delayed transit time or impaired intestinal motility can actually lead to bloat in a couple of other ways. So first and foremost, when your food is not properly moving through your digestive system, then what tends to happen is a greater accumulation of bacteria in the small intestines to try to get rid of any food waste from the small intestines. The bacteria will come alive, they'll start to eat and ferment the foods that you're eating, which can in one way help your body try to get this food out of your intestines so it's not sitting in there, but through the process of the bacteria eating up your partially or undigested foods, they produce inflammatory metabolites and gas. So in other words, when your transit time is slowed down, your intestines are more likely to accumulate these pathogens in the bacteria, which produce gas in of themselves, and inflammatory byproducts or metabolic waste that will not just inflame the intestines, causing them to become enlarged or swollen, but also the gas that they produce in of themselves can attribute to the bloating that you see in digestive dysfunction. So at the root of bloating, there is impaired intestinal function or motility, and a greater accumulation of bacteria, usually in the small intestines, which is resulting in both inflammation and the production of gas. And this combination of unpartially digested food or food waste sitting in your colon and the overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestines and the gas that they produce and inflammation that they cause, these things all together contribute to bloating that you see in impaired digestive function. So this is key information to understand if you wanna correct bloat. And there's another very important piece of information, which is that hypothyroidism is strongly associated with impaired intestinal motility. So at the root of digestive bloat is impaired intestinal dysmotility, which is resulting in constipation and the overgrowth of pathogens. And these things are preceded by hypothyroidism. So with this in mind, the real secret to correcting digestive bloat is to first and foremost, get rid of the overgrowth of bacteria in the intestines, which will help reduce the production of gas in the small intestine and inflammation that could be inflaming your intestines, and also to correct the impaired intestinal motility, so improve the functioning of your intestines. And these things are directly regulated by the health of the thyroid. So with all of this in mind, I have a couple of tips for you now to actually get to the root and correct digestive bloat. And going in order, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do and the most fundamental is to improve your thyroid function. If you can improve the health of your thyroid, then all aspects of your digestive system are going to improve. So this is gonna be the most important thing that you can do. And there are a couple of key things to understand about the thyroid gland to make sure it's working properly. All things we talk about in great detail in our perfect thyroid course that is up and coming. However, a couple of quick tips for you right now for improving thyroid function is going to be the use of 
thyroid boosting herbs like KSM 66 ashwagandha. This is an herb that is known to increase the production and the synthesis of thyroid hormone into this active form. And in this way, it can increase the metabolism, which will in turn improve digestive health. However, keep in mind there are many other things that affect the health of the thyroid that again, we talk about in our perfect thyroid course. So some fundamental things you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you're getting enough protein, enough carbohydrates and enough calories overall. A deficiency in these things can turn down the functioning of the thyroid. Also, it's imperative that you get micronutrients that we talk about in this video that are necessary for the production and conversion of thyroid hormone. Otherwise, beyond this point, there are some other tips that I have for you that could directly improve bloat and remedy bloat while you're correcting the root underlying cause, which is usually poor thyroid function. And my second tip is to increase the production of hydrochloric acid. So one of the major reasons that hypothyroidism results in bloat, other than delaying transit time and resulting in constipation and inflammation in the intestines, is that low thyroid function results in low hydrochloric acid production. So your stomach acid is essential for breaking down food in the stomach, so that way by the time it leaves the stomach to the small intestine, it is easily assimilated through the intestinal wall and into the bloodstream. However, if your HCL production is low, this means your food is going to be partially digested or indigested and then sent to the small intestine where it will be fermented by bacteria in the small intestines leading to gas and inflammation and bloat. So one thing that you can do while you're improving the root cause, which is usually low thyroid function, is to take an HCL supplement like this or to take Chinese bitters or other bitter herbs that are also known to increase the production of hydrochloric acid. This will work anecdotally to make sure you're breaking down food in the stomach while you're working long term to improve thyroid function. My third and final tip for correcting bloat is to get rid of some of the most common digestive irritating foods. So there are are certain foods over others that are really irritating to the gut no matter the shape of your intestines digestive system and even your thyroid and these are foods that are usually high in soluble fibers that don't break down very well by your digestive enzymes by the hydrochloric acid and instead are usually fermented by bacteria in the small intestine. So typically foods really high in soluble fiber and starch. So most of your grains and legumes and flour products are gonna be really irritating to the intestines, allergenic and inflammatory. And again, they're going to contribute to small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is going to contribute to digestive bloat. So I'd highly recommend avoiding the consumption of most grains grains, even if they're gluten-free grains, most starchy foods with the exception of maybe really well-cooked white potatoes or well-cooked white rice, something like a kanji, and the consumption of beans and legumes. These foods, the really starchy and really fibrous high soluble fiber foods are going to be, again, irritating to the gut and removing them long term or even short term while you correct intestinal inflammation will be very, very helpful for reducing bloat. So those are my three tips for you for correcting chronic or acute bloating, whether that's something that occurs right after eating a meal or if it's something that you just notice low grade occurring all of the time. These tips should help you get to the root level and improve your overall digestive function and then on the short term, remove some of the most aggravating foods that might be causing your bloating immediately. However, keep in mind there are plenty of other different foods that you're going to want to be aware of that might be contributing to bloat and also other foods that might be therapeutic for accelerating the healing process of the intestines, digestive system overall, and even metabolism that you're going to want to learn about. And these are things that we talk about in great detail in our Perfect Digestion course. It is a complete and comprehensive course for naturally and holistically improving overall digestive function. So once you implement these these tips. If you're interested in learning more about how to overall improve digestive function or digestive health, definitely be sure to check out that course for more information. Otherwise, that does bring this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. And if you're interested, of course, in learning more beyond this YouTube channel, remember we do have an online wellness academy where you'll find the Perfect Digestion course and Perfect Thyroid course. We have a blog with tons of free information and an online tonic herb shop where you'll find herbs like the KSM 66 ashwagandha for improving thyroid health and the Chinese bitters for increasing stomach acid production. You can find links to all of these things in the description box below.